Good evening, just a quick update on what's going on at the allotment at the moment. The red currants are coming on. I've actually got um, a number of these near the front of the allotment. I had a bit of a problem with uh, some sort of um, fungal attack on them, but I've, I've removed some of the leaves but kept just enough on because of the high levels of UV and sunshine. But as you can see, this is a Dutch variety and basically they are not all ripe, but ones which are getting the full sun have ripened nicely and what I've had to do because we've got very clever wood pigeons and I do admire their skills is I've actually netted just put some simple bamboo canes in and pegs is pegs in just low tech but it works to stop them from getting in and when I first planted these which these ones along here uh, the red currant I actually um, sort of put a load of gooseberries to the side of them because I thought to myself someone did tell me down here that uh, you know the wood pigeons are very intelligent so basically it's made it just a little bit harder for them to get in here the chay berries are ripening on some of these are already ripe when they're at the really dark color that's when they're ready for picking and I've had to down to the fact that we did have some winds some weeks ago and heavy rains but now of course we've got this drought on at the moment um, they should be ready uh, some, are, some are ready tonight they, they don't keep very well tea berries but luckily I don't mind because it's the sort of thing you can sort of have on the hoof when you're down here uh, just tied some string around the whole lot of them and another plant there which is um, a red robin actually uh, for tinea and my eucalyptus believe it or not I've actually overwatered it a little bit this year so uh, I've got myself a little bit of bit of mold on the end but it's it's been very good very useful uh, for various treatments around the allotment this year following advice from people uh, my russet apples are looking a lot better than the last two years um, any excess vertical growth on them has been uh, pruned off. Um, I've had a go at the aphids, I've had a go at the ants, um, all with organic treatments. I'll talk a little bit about that later, what I've been doing to keep the fruit trees healthy. But these russets seem to be okay for me on a dwarf root stock. So looking forward to the autumn. This is a burr hardy pear tree, again on a dwarf root stock and it's required um, some treatment basically ants of course um, and I've trialled a number of solutions the one I worked on over the last couple of days has been made by crushing up lemon balm which grows like wildfire on this plot um, and I also put some eucalyptus in from the plot chopped them all up put them in uh, my watering can and basically after I've cut off as many diseased leaves of, as I can and removed them and bagged them I soak the tree in this solution just only on the affected areas and it seems to deter ants there's one or two on but not like they used to be my fig tree cuttings which took after hormone rooting powder on the ends of them and putting them in compost for about four months I've now put five of them down here and as you can see with this one I've contained the roots at the moment inside this pot there's some compost in there um, I've fed it with tomato food and I've come down and watered it not over watered it but I'm just going to see how it gets on in this container in the roots and that's one of them I've got down the apple varieties that I've tried down here or I am trying are things like L Star, James Grieve and also as I've mentioned Russet Apples, Red Discovery and of course Bramley um, and some trees have done very well this year and some not so well every single fruit tree has been attacked by pests so I've pruned these ones because they are only just on dwarf rootstock anything that's branching too much anything that's too long or anything going vertical or crossed has been taken off to get the air to them you don't get massive crops on these ones but you do get a crop uh, they do they are quite intensive care so if you are going to do them uh, i'd recommend you know reading up about these some apples like james greaves and spartan um, 
they do come out at different times so these ones here are basically much more advanced than uh, other ones on the plot again not a massive crop this year but not bad considering the horrendous uh, weather we've had Saar plums and Victoria plums have been very successful this year I've noted other people's plum trees have been particularly spectacular this has been attacked by every pest possible and I've just fought back constantly so every time I've been down I've either treated it with the bicarb and the milk that's the fungus and also ants detergent to deter the aphids and recently I've been trialing lemon balm and a bit of eucalyptus to deter insects from attacking because again don't forget flies will sometimes lay uh, eggs inside these so I'm trying to work on an organic method of uh, treating these fruits as they ripen but quite pleased really on, on these dwarfs. The chamomile flowers are now well in bloom. Roman chamomile I've got here and also another one called German chamomile. These ones are much more potent uh, if drunk as a tea um, for a resting calming effect. I use them, I don't know, late at night time I'll have just a cup just with some of these flowers in I have them fresh you can dry them but I worry about them going mouldy in my house so I have them fresh you have to use more if you use fresh just that some hot water stir it really does help to put you to sleep uh, so that's the reason I grow the chamomile apart from the beauty of the flower obviously this rooted fig tree cutting which I took from the non-fruiting plant in my garden I've done this one we're using rubble and old smashed up bricks I've made a cage underground which is two foot by two foot so those, this one I'm planning on it growing taller rather than putting in a plastic container obviously the ones in the containers the roots will burst through and I'll have to contain them again but I really just want to experiment with growing my figs from scratch basically my own cuttings this one here was more mature as you know bramleys are quite misshapen uh, or I suppose you could call them wonky fruit which is what some uh, supermarkets call their fruit that's misshapen or sold on its own um, these bramleys they, I've got red bramleys and also the more traditional green bramleys these trees here um, I wouldn't say they are massively heavy croppers and some years you don't get many uh, this sister tree over there has only given me two but they're okay as you can see you do have problems with it this is an example of um, fungus growing maybe because they've been a bit over watered I've been but we've had terrible high UV levels but I should be treating this fungus uh, and I'll be using some detergent bicarb on this and a bit of milk mixture um, of course I do wipe it off and wash my hands but it's a common thing and I've seen this in orchards I've, I've been on a few walks around orchards um, recently again and their trees are all affected, <coughs> are all affected as well this young saar plum tree um, has just been pruned by me and it will need a lot more pruning at the moment I'm trying to leave some leaves on because of the high, high levels of sunshine I don't want it to be scorched too much but the idea is to really open it up I don't want it, the whole plant to grow any taller than this because it's only on a dwarf root stock quite happy with this this year's crop gained by pollinating with a, the paintbrush method as I showed you on earlier videos and it seems to be surviving again I'm spraying at the moment with lemon balm and a little bit of eucalyptus it's about two handfuls of lemon balm all chopped up um, and about 20 eucalyptus leaves all chopped up so I'll put into one watering can leave it to soak overnight and basically I take off the worst inf infected leaves if you've got mold or ants on them or aphids and basically I just water over the leaves over the infected area it, it just seems to drench slowly over the plant on a dry night and I don't see as many ants on it now so I think perseverance is the key to these fruit trees you can't there's no sort of magic bullet herbs don't mind these hot sunny days and there's a berries there that will produce berries next year um, and there's also scented plants like jasmine and my roses have done well uh, mint I've been trying some mint actually mint tea I don't know whether anybody else uses it I just put, take some leaves off um, I leave them to dry for about a couple of days chop them up and have my tea I find them quite um, quite nice really if you do like mint in your tea I, I, I don't have it all year round but I've just tried a bit now and lavender seems to have done well this year I haven't tried any of the uh, 
vervain or uh, self heal this year um, but that's not to say I won't look up what you could use it for apparently the druids were quite fond of it um, the kitchen herbs that we bought seem to be doing very well um, so basically there's one there and there's another one which is celery leaf which is already going to flower my guinea pigs love that celery leaf and again plenty of mint and of course you've got rosemary oregano and uh, sage doing well some more rosemary and lots of bay and the bay at this time of year it seems to be very heavily scented um, I really do enjoy use you can use it of course in your cooking and I'm going to let my elderflower I've made some elderflower drinks this year as you've seen on earlier ones but now I'm going to let it let it go to berry um, the birds particularly wood pigeon lo love this love the berries but I should be using some of them I'll try and make some elderberry um, compote maybe or preserve uh, something I know it's got lots of tannins in it it's not uh, very nice just on its own Budleys have been beautiful this year some people have got some beautiful varieties down this allotment mine is just your basic wild one and over underneath there my passion flowers haven't opened yet not for lucky sunshine though but it's not quite ready yet the dwarf french beans these are known as purple queen planted um well on 3rd of june actually i've decided to put dates on not not bad for me slowly getting there aren't i listening to tips from you lot uh 3rd of june and they're up now so we're 21st of june and uh they're up now so i'm quite pleased about that i haven't over watered but i was worried about these um when we had very very hot dry weather but they seem to have come through okay this has been my worst apple tree totally caught up in um, attacks from pests, fungus, aphids, ants, um, green fly, whatever you name it, white fly. But even so, even though you can see the ants coming up now, I, I have a go at this all the time and it's still, despite all the attacks, still going to get a, a crop. So that's well worth it not to give it not to give in on these fruits and not to let the pests have your crop so that's well worth it for me i do it is a battle but it's worth it these are tough plants aren't they chard when i put them in which i grew from grew these from seed um they looked dead for about a week they were just all you know lying flat in neighboring plot holders must have thought what you know what the hell is he doing but after about 10 days of constant attention they've basically come back to life new leaves have come up so you know well worth it on the other side of them is my beetroot my beetroot that's a pablo um, they seem a bit tougher and a bit more drought resistant but they seem happy the leeks began as being tiny little blades of grass and some of them still are again grown from seed uh, but some of them seem to be more vigorous than the others i did put two different varieties in uh, and stupidly i didn't sort of label which one i put in which spot i know one of them is musselburgh that might be the one that's quite weedy but the other variety seems to be far more vigorous but they do seem to be coming through i thought i would get zero on these ones but uh, i should have something to look forward to. purple sprouting broccoli again grown from seed quite heavily attacked down here but i'd be happy if maybe you know if only about four or five of these made it i only put about a dozen in and um they all seem to be managing but uh, i'm sort of waiting for the pest to die down i've tried my best as you can see these are some of the red currants which are near the top of the plant which are more ripe but they're not quite ripe the results of my raspberry pruning experiment are in i found out that if you prune more heavily and earlier on you actually get a smaller crop um these ones here are just ripening off so half of them i pruned these are summer fruiting um and i pruned them this half quite heavily and it's got a much smaller crop starting off about this point here they were pruned much later and i waited to see which of the um you know the stalks on them were actually dead because then you wait for them to actually turn brown it's a brown ones that you remove difficult to tell with summer fruiting to get the pruning right but it's worth being more patient so that's my advice to you if you're growing summer fruiting ones don't prune them until much later 
and you'll see which is the older branch there's see that one's an older one that's so by winter time that'll be looking much more brown and this one's a younger one you can leave that in for next year so that's that's good but i'm still overall very pleased of course it's been attacked by the usual creeping climbing vines they're very clever they've got green leaves and you know if you're sort of not sharp you might miss them but I, be, I go wear my gardening gloves and rip them all out where I can to try and get rid of the vines on them but very pleased with the raspberries all in all this year slowly ripening off red discovery apple tree has been quite heavily pruned by me over the last couple of weeks it had all sorts of shoots going up vertically all sorts of extra long branches coming out of it and basically it was really sort of uh, top heavy so I've opened up the canopy on it bearing in mind I, I don't think the same rules apply to these as, to, as apply to a full-size fruit tree I think you've got to keep on top of these um, grafted fruit trees and make sure they're not bearing too much excessive branches try and keep the branches open even if you get a smaller crop you'll certainly have less disease and you will get a crop if you're patient with your pruning some years you will get nothing um, but you want to make sure that the trees are open much more so than even ones that are full size because they, they again the dwarf fruit shop cannot take a massive weight um, quite pleased got nothing on this last year and here it is rewarding me and it's the pollinating partner is the Bramley and this one here has, has been superb this year very happy again it had to be pruned by me over the last couple of weeks um, I go by I go by basically instinct on fruit trees. If they look unhappy and they're basically attacked by disease, you have to come up with a solution, an organic solution in my case, because I'm not going to use um, proprietary chemicals. They do get into your you can never have too much chamomile, can you? And of course, these flowers will be ending up in my teacup as a nice good night drink to me just before I go go off to the land of Nod. Um, I've grown these in, in a tub in the full sun. I took little cuttings off the one on the herb garden ones because it got a bit too wild, got too many of them. This is what wild chamomile grows like. You will find it growing. Sometimes you'll just find it and you'll think it's a weed on your allotment, but if it looks sort of feathery like this, and you sort of go up to it and squeeze a little bit, give it a, give it a little bit of a squeeze and smell it. You can actually smell the herb, the, the scent of chamomile. Um, and apparently, of course, you know, there was a book called The Chamomile Lawn, wasn't there? And oh, that's how I grew it. I just found it wild and, and, and propagated it myself. This is my tallest damson and it's coming in at just over four foot. Um, quite a few years yet till this one's going to be in fruit but look at it, it looks such so inauspicious doesn't it it look, almost looks like a weed doesn't it but somehow um, those clever crusaders and romans knew that this uh, would grow into a nice bush and you get a nice crop off these They're not native to the uk so they are brought in but you will find them around wild um, and basically i grew many of them from stones from dams and stones left in the freezer and then uh, shock the seeds to life, put them in a bit of hot water for a short time, crack them open with that cracker and put them in some compost and there you go. These tay berries get the early morning sun and it seems to be that that is the sun itself which is ripening these off a lot quicker than the ones um, I've got further along. So this one's also got much more access to uh, shelter so it's in a much more sheltered spot and also older than the other one so uh, pruned it um, and over the winter and basically it's it's come back and it's rewarded me with good crop I've had to feed it um, I've used chicken manure some fish blood and bone not overfed it but basically just kept it happy and watered in dry weather and it seems to be happy some Pablo beetroots um, planted in a site which gets full sun um, in from late morning onwards basically it's in full sun and these have grown the most so they've got this little plot all to themselves we dug over and prepared it quite well before we put them in so they seem quite pest resistant actually pablo put two lots of, of sweet corn in two different types um, I've, first of all i've got wind pollinated ones in and they're doing very well and then another variety i've grown from seed has been these mini pops and these are planted away from them and I've just got another about another 16 maybe 20 I don't know if they'll if, if they'll, they'll make it up to 20 in the end um, to go in of these ones I'll find another plot from separate away from the 
these are my mini pops that I've grown from seed at home basically use a seed tray I've had to feed them quite a lot with tomato food they've been up against the kitchen window and that's why they're sort of leaning over like that but they're desperate to go and I had to wait till the, till the sweltering hot weather went these broad beans went in directly from seed um, in April, end of April and apart from having to spray them with some detergent and squash them the top, the tops where they've been attacked by black fly, of course avo avoiding uh, hurting any of the ladybirds which dine out on them, they seem to be doing okay at the moment, I haven't overwatered them um, so I'm looking forward to a nice crop from them. Back to dwarf beans that have just been coming up, these went in um, end of May so they're a lot later planted, I found out by planting too early I wasn't getting so much success particularly with the pest being more active but now they seem, seem a little bit safer and they, they're just coming up as you can see. Well, I finally caught up with some advice people gave me. I've always put a stick in next to where I've planted something substantial. I didn't put a label in, should have done. Forgotten about this, but luckily the stick saved its horseradish. I put this in all oh, months and months ago, early April. Nothing came up and I thought, oh, well, it hates the clay soil and it's uh, died. But no, as you can see, it's fighting for itself. Give it some water, fed it, and up it's coming. That's so this horseradish, I bought this. I think Wilco's, I bought a couple of them, one of them I put in uh, elsewhere um, but it looks like this horseradish has survived Here's a strange flower, it only flowers at night and it's called a night flowering catch fly on the label um, and uh, that's often when I'm down here much later on um, quite, quite nice to see something that just comes out at night that flowers just for you when you're down in your plot so I recommend this one Right, that's it for tonight then. I hope you've enjoyed my quick uh, update about what's going on. I'll leave you with, with my nice little background there, some blackberry flowers. I'm um, looking forward to them. Of course, best eaten on the hoof, aren't they, blackberries? <laughs>